think the most interesting thing about being an artist is that you don't know where you're going to go with what you're doing because you have a starting point which can be deliberate or, or less deliberate and then you don't know where the end point is going to be. I really hope I'm sculpting in 10 years time, 20 years time because I really enjoy doing it. It's the ideal activity. I did a lot of my growing up as an artist in London and it was very interesting working in big group studios so it was exciting because lots of input from different sorts of artists, in fact a lot of them are quite well known. I shared a big group studio in South East London with Mark Wallinger and Tracy Immin. Um, it was great because you had input, uh, freshness, uh, there was more stress, it's a bigger pond. My style has developed over the last 30 years but not quite as much as I would have imagined in that I can recognise the earlier work. I certainly understand what I'm doing more, but it is highly recognisable from the early work as well. Sometimes a piece of work can, can work really fast. If you start the right way and it goes smoothly, it can take maybe a month. But mostly it takes longer because the process of working and reworking can take six months, sometimes with a bigger piece, about a year. I put the music on, uh, I sit down and zone out, and it's the most wonderful activity, actually. Moving up to Norfolk has been different. I think my work's calmed down and it's more domestic. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Quite a lot of the day is spent sculpting, but being self-employed, I can take the day off if I want to, which is brilliant, fantastic freedom. I, I love listening to Wagner. Um, I've recently got into that, and you're kind of either into Wagner or you're not. And um, so I play that fairly loudly at the moment, so everybody knows when I'm in the studio. I think I'm finding um, my work more therapeutic as I've got older because I think I'm more confident about what I'm doing. It used to be agonising really and I couldn't bear to have anybody watch what I was doing and I was always very anxious when people came to see the work. Uh, I've got older and I just think I, I can be me, my work can be me and that's quite comfortable. So I, I actually really do enjoy working now. I think I wanted to be a sculptor from pretty early on, I, I used clay from the beach and really liked working on something that was real. Um, I didn't ever think I would become an artist or a sculptor, actually, but it happened in the end through lots of happy chances, really. The casting process it goes back thousands of years. It's very highly skilled process, which is really why it costs so much to have done, because every part of the process is fraught with danger of sort of having a, a failure. So I use a very highly skilled foundry who produces extremely good work and has a very low failure rate. So we started today with the investment kiln. We, we removed the moulds from the, from the kiln um, in order to pour bronze into them. The moulds are basically sculptures captured in a negative space. The client will come to us with an original piece of sculpture. It could be in, in any form. We then go through a process of mould making which enables us to transfer their original object into wax. We then go through a system of spruing up the wax which is basically putting a set of pathways for the bronze to go into the actual object and remove all the air as the bronze goes in. Today all we've done is principally fill them with molten bronze. We then knock the moulds open and we have the, the very beginnings of a piece of sculpture. Well, that's the beauty. 
beautiful one. Having knocked out the bronzes, the whole different part of the process takes over, so it's metal finishing from then on right until the end, which is a process which takes a very, very long time, and it's a highly skilled process. So we start by initially uh, trimming up the bronzes, taking off the runners and risers, uh, removing all the investment, we pressure wash them clean, we shot blast them clean, and then start cutting back with uh, power tools, and then it goes over to hand tools all the way to the end. So things like hand files, sharp chisels, um, or modelling chisels, and also chisels to uh, put texture back into the surface. I started out showing in small mixed group shows in London and have built up from there really. I've organised my own shows. I've had one in the Orangery in Holland Park. I've shown at the uh, Royal Academy Summer Exhibition. I've shown in lots of art fairs um, in Europe, but more especially in London. Um, I can't believe that I am. I am one. I didn't ever think it would happen. I'm terribly grateful for whatever forces have made that possible because, and it's lots of forces, it's family, it's finance, it's clients, it's and it's a lot of chance. So I feel really very, very lucky. It's one of the luckiest things in my life that I've been an artist because I've really enjoyed doing it and I'm going to keep at it, I think.